So let's go to Ephesians, the second chapter. From the first chapter, it seems like he's saying that the saints are God's people. Because he's talking to, it doesn't use the word, okay, yeah, saints, which are at Ephesus. Yeah, he, he's, he's talking to those believers in Jesus Christ, Gentile believers. Okay, in, in, in Ephesians, the second chapter, starting with the 11th verse, Wherefore remember that ye being in time past, Gentiles, in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. In other words, the Jewish people believed in circumcision. That was a sign that they were a Jew. The males had to be circumcised according to the law of Moses. But the uncircumcision was the Gentiles, referred to the Gentiles, nations, peoples, because they, did, they had no such law and custom that their males should be circumcised as a sign of their, uh, that they were under the law of Moses and, people of, and the people of God, Jewish. So, so Paul is talking to Gentile believers in Jesus Christ. Verse number 11, for remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace who hath made both one and have broken down the middle wall of petition between us. Who is he talking about? Jews and Gentiles. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, the enmity even the law of commandments, contained in ordinances for to make in himself of twain of two one new man so making peace and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross having slain the enmity thereby and came and preached peace to those to, to you which are afar off and to them which are not for through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Verse 19. Now, therefore, ye Gentiles are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Okay, so what we see here, is really deep, but it tells us who the church is. It tells us, without even saying it, he's telling us who is the church. He's telling us who the saints of God are. He's telling us that the saints and the church is one, refers to one group of people. And those people are those People that are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Let's look at let's look at some more scriptures. That, that, that both Old Testament and New Testament believers. It doesn't matter whether you're Old Testament or New Testament. You are the body of Christ. You are the bride of Christ. You are the church. You are the saints.
of God is what Paul is trying to, to establish here. Let's look at some more scriptures that deal with this because it is such an important subject, especially when you're talking about Daniel's prophecy because he uses the word saints. He also uses the word, you know, the word, the term God's people, the people of the Most High. Okay. Revelations 13th chapter, 7th verse. Oh, excuse me, let's, before we go to Revelation, let's look at 1 Corinthians 12, 13. Take our time, break it down, and let God's Holy Spirit give us the correct understanding and interpretation of His Word. And He will. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. <clears throat> Paul is writing to the Corinthian church. Another Gentile country. Corinth. It wasn't a Jewish country in Israel. It was a, a Gentile country. And he's writing to the believers and the church in the city of Corinth. 1 Corinthians. 7th, uh, excuse me, 12th chapter. Start with the, let's start with the, with the 12th verse. 12th chapter, 12th verse. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, have and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many members. If the foot shall say, Behold, because I am not the hand, I, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? Then he goes on to say, uh, Verse 20, But now are they many, me many members, yet but one body. Okay, so as we can see from Paul's illustration, we are all members, whether Jew or Gentile, we've all been baptized into the body of Christ by one Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit, and we're in the same body of Christ, the church. Whether you're Jew or whether you're Gentile, it doesn't matter because God is not looking at the flesh anymore. He's looking at the spirit. He's looking at those he's seen. He's trying to see who are those people who have made a covenant with him through and by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. By putting their faith and trust in the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made on the cross at Calvary. And that's what determines who spiritual true Israel is today in God's sight. The, the spirit, spiritual Israel is those people who have put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. But there still is physical Israel also. Who God is, you know, they have blindness over their eyes, but God is, according to his word, he's going to remove the blindness from their eyes in these last days. And a remnant is going to be saved. And it, it Revelations even talks about 12,000 that will be sealed from each of the 12 tribes of Israel during, during the Great Tribulation period. All right, let us go on. So we see, you know, the body of Christ is one body made up of Jews, Gentiles, Old Testament believers, New Testament believers. It doesn't matter as long as you are, 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 have made that covenant with, with God through sacrifice, whether it be the Old Testament or the New Testament. It doesn't matter because Old Testament believers in Jesus Christ are going to be saved 
are saved and, and will be in heaven just like us New Testament believers in Jesus Christ because of the blood, the precious blood of Jesus Christ. So, uh, let's look at, let's go on and look at uh, uh, Revelations, 13th chapter, 7th verse. We're getting, we're getting close to the end.